Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here with a review of two enclosures from microvarium.com. I'll put a link down in the description. This here is the Isopod Lodge. I did an unboxing video of this in September of 2021. So it's been about 19 months since that time. And then I received an Isopod Mansion in September of 2022, and it's been around seven months since that time. Now, both of these enclosures I'm pretty impressed with, but I'm going to tell you my honest opinion, uh, what I think that I like and what I'm not quite sure that I like, and so on. So one thing that I have liked a lot is the substrate. Now, I think it's about time for the substrate to be changed. Typically, I try to change the substrate a little bit before, you know, it's been 19 months, almost two years. And I haven't changed the substrate uh, in this enclosure, and that's not something I would normally do, but I found the, the substrate to work really well. And uh, I didn't have any problems with molding or anything like that with this substrate. I really liked it. You can just see now that the top layer and, and some of it under that is brass or isopod waste. You can see that a lot of it has been transformed that way, as one would expect. You can see some springtails still kicking around in there. You may recall, if you saw my original video, and I will have links to those original videos of the unboxings, that I decided to do an experiment with this um, isopod lodge. I decided to put quite a few different species in. And one of the individuals that I put in there, I was only putting one individual from each species. And I put them in quite small, hoping that they would be so small that they hadn't mated yet and would not reproduce. Well, interestingly, I put a very small zebra pillbug in there, Armadillidium maculatum. And that is mostly what remains in here, that very small one, which was probably no bigger than that individual there on the screen right now. It's running away. Um, must have made it, as they often do when they're immature, but it was even smaller than I expected it to have, uh, for a mating to be successful. And there have been quite a few zebras, and I have pulled zebras out of here, thinned the herd of zebras, so to speak, on a number of occasions. I've also added a few Porcelio Levis to see how that goes um, in small numbers. And you can see now they're reproducing here a little bit, which is not surprising considering Porcelio Levis, but all of the other individual isopods died out with the exception of the zebras. Some of them persisted for a very long time. I had a very large milk back in here for a good long time, but eventually those died out. And if I hadn't added some more Porcelio Levis, then there wouldn't be any in here. So this is one example, one situation where the one zebra ice pod, since it was fertile and was able to produce offspring, eventually outcompeted all other ice pods in the enclosure. I believe I've topped off the moss, uh, but one nice thing that I love about the way that these enclosures come is the uh, micro grazer greens that the company produces and sends with them, at least in both cases, both with the isopod lodge and the isopod mansion I received micrograzer greens and because these have uh, dried leaf litter in them uh, and provide quite a few different sort types of nutrients with these are like premium type uh, uh, leaf litters I guess you could say and so they, they get quite a, a few nutrients from these not as much as they would get if bacteria were to grow on them but they do still really go after these and get some good nutrients from them so I like that those come with them as well as other food. And I ended up adding this, uh, this shell. I believe I had a different kind of uh, food dish in there initially. I would just like a flat piece of cork bark or, or some sort of botanical, I don't remember, but I ended up adding this just for convenience in feeding them. But as you can see, they've, they've done well. Uh, like I said, I've removed a lot of zebra isopods from this isopod lodge. And the only ventilation in this enclosure, some people, might be concerned that there's not very much, but there's five holes on one side like this, five holes on one side like this, no cross ventilation on the sides, but it is proven with zebras that that ventilation, additional ventilation was not necessary. This was sufficient for the zebras to, to do well, to thrive, to reproduce multi-generationally. So interesting, but uh, sometimes ventilation can be overdone uh, and I feel like this is quite sufficient for this small enclosure. I really, the only thing that I 
uh, don't like about this enclosure, I would say, is that it's too small for large numbers of isopods to do well over a long period of time. Like I said, I've thinned the herd of zebras in this enclosure quite a few times. Of necessity, if I had not done so, it would have been overcrowded. But other than that, I feel like it's a quality uh, enclosure. It comes with nice pieces of cork bark, and uh, they, there are plenty of hides for the, the isopods. And like I said, I, I think the substrate worked really well. And uh, it comes with good instructions for setting it up. I think the, the only thing I would say is that it is a little small. And so if you put ice pods in it, you need most species of ice pods. You need to plan on moving them out um, once the population got a little bit bigger, at least moving some of them out. And before I begin to talk about this isopod mention, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. There's a list of my patrons at the end of this video. If you would like to become a patron and help support what we do at Aquarimax Pets, and find out what kind of perks we offer to our patrons, then you can check out the link at the end of the description. I'll also put a link at the end of the video, or you can just go to patreon.com and search for Aquarimax Pets. All right, now let's take a look at this. This is uh, a much bigger enclosure. For comparison, here is the Isopod Lodge on the left, and here is the Isopod Mansion on the right. You can also see that the Isopod Mansion has a lot more ventilation. It's got this mesh here, mesh all along the sides for uh, excellent cross ventilation. In the front, there's no cross ventilation to speak of, but all along uh, three sides, it's got the cross ventilation. So plenty of ventilation. So those are some of the features that I like. Obviously, very good ventilation, a uh, little watering port, the feeding port with the magnetic closure. Those are nice, um, nice visibility. Something I'm not a fan of are these little pegs that you use when you're assembling it and if you need to disassemble it. The pegs um, have a little tool that comes with them so you can twist them and they lock in place to secure the lid um, so that if you, you could lift off the entire thing without those pegs and I, you can see that I have most of the pegs off right now so I could do that. Uh, instead of having to use this to open it. If you want to be able to access the entire enclosure without the lid in the way, you remove the pegs, you can remove the entire lid. These tend to fall out, uh, get knocked out, whatever. Maybe I'm just being clumsy, but I'm not a gigantic fan of them. But again, since I'm working with isopods here, it's not a big deal because I'm not worried about them pushing the lid off. If I were dealing with a, a more something like a tarantula or a, a snake that can push the lid off, you know that, that would be um, more important. Now, the ventilation, which I mentioned as a pro, I think can be a pro, but it can also be a con in that most of my isopod enclosures do not have ventilation to this degree. So I really have to stay on top of hydration because, you know, with this high ventilation, you're going to get more evaporation. So I would only recommend this for um, isopods that can handle a lot of ventilation. Some don't do as well that way. And if you are going to make sure that you're conscientious about making sure the hydration station is moistened at regular intervals, doesn't dry out. Otherwise, you could, you could have some issues. Now, because I have Porcelio flava marginatus in here, that's, that's actually uh, a plus because they do like some decent ventilation. Now, I've removed the pegs. I'm going to uh, take a look inside. All right, Porcelio flava marginatus likes a little bit of uh, climbing space. There's an individual right there up on the highest piece of bark. I'm going to find some more a little bit lower down. There's another larger individual right there. As I, as I dig into the enclosure, you'll see I'll see more and more of them. But I've, I've seen them do doing well in here. They're breeding. Just saw some small individuals. There's some more right here. They seem to be really doing well in here. Um, I just have to make sure that I keep up, like I said, with the hydration because they do like their, their drier areas, but they also like, um, they need a hydration station. They're not going to survive very long being isopods. So I have to say my experience with both microbarium enclosures has been positive. The isopods are doing well. Um, I do have a couple of things that I might change about the enclosures, but they're not major issues. and. Uh, I'm working with them and, and they're doing just fine. So I would say if you're interested in the 
uh, microbarium enclosures um, that I can recommend them that I've had a positive experience with them. And if you have kept microbarium enclosures and you have comments, either way, positive or negative, please feel free to let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say.